went to hell and back to be able to tell you this. A 5 gram diphenhydramine trip report, posted by Cedric on August 7th, 2011. After around 20 minutes of consuming all the pills, I started to see mild distortions and audio hallucinations, mostly ticking and scratching, which seemed distant. I was inside the car which was going to the house I was supposed to spend my trip at. I kept telling my friend Martin not to interfere with the trip in any way, unless it was obvious that I was in lethal danger. I noticed my memory span was becoming shorter and shorter, and the ticking and scratching was getting louder, along with a mild head rush like high pitched sound. Right before we reached this place, I realised I couldn't move, and my vision started glitching up. It kept flashing and freezing, and sometimes I wouldn't see anything at all for a split second. I told this to Martin, and he convinced me I could walk, I just had to do it carefully, so I followed him to the house. I was very, very heavy, and every time I looked at the floor, it seemed like my feet were sinking into it. I was left alone in the room, which was slowly melting all around me. Most of the furniture had bright, unusual outlines. At this point, I felt crawling all over my body. My vision flashed again, and I found myself completely covered in spiderwebs. I moved my hands through them, which helped for a little while. My hands would go through them and they'd fade, but the webs would come back almost immediately. I could feel the sticky sensation on my skin, which made them seem just as real as I was. Then, there was a loud knock at the window. I turned around to see someone standing behind it, so I opened it. I heard music coming from outside. It was different from what I heard during my last trip, but strangely familiar and similar to it. Let's go, Cedric, said the creature, and I climbed out the window without much consideration. It was extremely hard to walk. The grass and the trees seemed grainy, and it looked like they were moving, crawling, breathing and living. My sense of time was severely distorted. A few steps would feel like an eternity, or would just black out and confuse fairly long periods of time for a single second. We were heading towards the music, the creature walking a few steps ahead of me. After a while, I started noticing lights, probably torches, amongst these trees and hundreds of moths around them. The air was full of moths, and they would land on me and fly around. I tried my best to keep them out of my face, failing miserably. Finally, we reached a clearing. There were many people there. At the front, very still, stood my relatives, all dressed in black, surrounded by shadows and people I don't know. They all seemed frozen, and had the same blank expression on their faces, eyes fixed on me. I tried to talk, but my voice got stuck in my throat. It was extremely sore and dry. I started feeling a mixture of guilt and fear, but as I could tell they all knew the creature took me here because of DPH, and considering most of them were dead, I wasn't even sure if I was alive. Suddenly, there was a very unpleasant crackling sound and a white flash. The creature who took me here was gone now, and everyone was just walking around and talking, completely ignoring me. I decided to sit down because of the heaviness. After a while, I noticed a black dot moving through the grass towards me very quickly with the corner of my eye. Then, I would feel a bulge moving under my shirt at the right shoulder. I freaked out and smacked it, and a black rat fell out of my sleeve. It looked dead, but every time I took my attention off it, it would disappear and run and hide under my shirt again. I was terrified of it for some reason, and after around five loops of this happening, I started beating it repeatedly after it dropped out of my sleeve. I did this until the rat's body turned into some sort of rubber goo. Its legs were still moving, but after this it wouldn't touch me again. But I did keep seeing its distorted body with the trembling legs from time to time throughout the trip. I quickly stood up and went to a different spot. I was approached by my mother, and she was crying. Why did you do this, Cedric? warned you. I told her not to worry, and I was going to be fine, 
which was obviously bullshit. Other people froze in place again, and I could hear voices saying, We warned you. What have you done? Even though their lips weren't actually moving. The longer I looked at them, the more distorted they would get, until they formed these bug eyes and arms reaching the ground. Another flash followed. I was back at the front yard of the house and saw Martin standing by me. I assumed he shook me. He was asking if I was alright and that I'd been standing here for ages. He had these spiders in his hair. I tried to say yes, but I couldn't because my mouth was so painfully dry. I began to walk my way towards the house, but later on after all this, Martin told me I never even went there in the first place. The whole trip thus far has been experienced right after stepping out of the car, standing and moving around at that very spot. There are many blackouts at this point. I recall centipedes from my last trip and spiders all over me and inside me. Around 10 of them crawled out of my mouth. July 13th. I woke up the next day still tripping hard. I never remembered even falling asleep. I went to check the next room. Martin told me I was out for around five hours. I then later found out that he was still asleep and the information was completely false. I managed to get some water and go to the bathroom because the urge to pee was terrible. Moving was still a difficult task and I couldn't concentrate properly. This is when I posted, alive, the previous report. When I got back to the living room, I saw someone sitting on the couch. It stood up and I recognised the figure as the hat man. He walked towards me and said, You are getting in and running out. I started to feel extremely hazy and got another head rush. I'm not sure if I left the sofa or blacked out and lay down on it, but I was there at the edge of sleep, and the hat man was looking right at me. This might be a dream, or a full-blown trip. I don't remember closing my eyes, and I could still feel my surroundings. I was in an extremely vast room. The floor, ceiling, and walls were all black. There were no doors, and I couldn't see where it ended, because darkness hid it out of sight. There was a woman standing right in front of me. She looked at me, smiled, and took her face off as if it was a mask. The face behind it looked exactly the same, but she was bleeding from her eyes, mouth and nose, and her eyes were completely black. I looked around the room once again, to see faces appearing on the walls and ceiling, greeting me without words, until they started to fall down like masks as well revealing bruised and blood-covered faces. The masks would then turn into ash that wouldn't settle, but move around the floor and feet. That's about all I can remember from this stage of the trip. After I snapped out of this, I laid there for a while, feeling my heart beat rapidly. The hat man was gone. My hallucinations are mostly audio now. I heard lots of incomprehensible whispers and quiet singing, I posted on this thread again and decided to go to sleep for real. I was so very tired. This time, I drifted into a deep, deep sleep. After a while had passed, I realised I was sleeping. My vision was completely black until this room began to appear. It was small and grey, its door open, displaying nothingness. I walked towards the door and stepped out of the room. Several shadows approached me. The door then shut, and I heard, You were out, very clearly, and felt this burning pain in my chest. Martin said I started screaming. He tried to wake me up and check my pulse. He realised what was happening, and called me an ambulance. Let me tell you, I had to down a lot of charcoal, and I had minor hallucinations for around three days. Jesus, that was probably the most intense DPH trip report I've ever read. Um, this was way beyond a heavy dose, which is usually considered around 700 milligrams. This guy took 5,000 milligrams. I think this is probably the 
heaviest dose of DPH I've ever read on the internet. It goes without saying to never do this yourself. I mean, there's so many skeets cans out there that I probably can't sway someone from doing it if they really want to, but I 100% do not advocate doing any deliriance really, to be fair. I just don't think they're worth trying out. Um, you can get so much more benefit from traditional psychedelics and dissociatives and um, other classes of substances, but deliriance are really dangerous for your mind and body. Um, it can result in death, brain damage, um, genuine like post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and unending nightmares, uh, HPPD. Uh, really not the one, to be honest, and especially don't be taking 5,000 milligrams. That's just fucking mental, to be fair. Um, interestingly, there was actually a part of this report that's been cut out. Uh, the person who posted this uh put it on a site that's been taken down and then he only had a copy of some paste bin um, uh, snippet of the whole report so in the actual reddit thread um, they posted it on um, some guy says could you please elaborate on this part I snap back to reality and look up at Denny he is clearly shaken I ask if everything is okay and his response destroys me I just had your flashback I'm extremely curious as to what he meant by that and the OP says, he saw the flashback I was having. He described the exact thing I saw. <laughs> the exact thing I saw. He described the exact thing I saw. It was strange. And yeah, that was really fascinating. It seems like that was sort of um, some, an effect you'd see more so on, say, high-dose psychedelic reports. Um, I, I know I've actually experienced sort of my consciousness or ego or sense of self slip out into another person and they sort of like repeat my experience back to me it's like oh I've literally just experienced exactly what you experienced it's like we sort of merged together in a really weird way and um, I think it's possibly because you, you, your self sense of self or ego dissolves down to such a point that it sort of literally molds into another person's and you're sort of like talking back to yourself in a way just or i mean there's so many explanations for it so like this guy here the guy replied to it says it's shit like this that makes you think we're all connected in ways we cannot perceive or understand i've heard too many stories like this and even experienced some things myself that are incredibly hard to pass off as simple coincidences and let's be honest we still only have a vague idea of how the brain works sure it's a lot more scientific than it used to be there's a long way to go and maybe something hidden away holds the key to all of this um yeah it, it, it obviously it is a phenomenon uh, like the guy says ne an excess of multiple discovery a fairly common phenomenon for people working entirely independently of each other to reach the same conclusion in quick succession in the movie waking life they discuss how this might be indicative of, indicative <laughs> of some sort of collective consciousness um to be fair, I'm, I'll probably lean more towards the collective universal consciousness side of things. Um, coincidences like these and, and synchronicities um, are very mystical in nature. And when they happen to you, it really does... It depends on the sort of person. I know for me, when, it, when I have experienced a synchronicity to that extent, even when sober, it sort of like pierces the veil of my soul in a sense and really makes me feel connected in a universal sense um, in sort of the as above, so below sort of thing. Um, but yeah, obviously, um, I can see why people would just interpret it in a, in that sort of sense, or just a common phenomenon of being multiple discoveries. But when you're tripping on 5,000 milligrams of DPH, the reality you're experiencing is not sober human reality anymore. You're completely beyond gone. Um, of course, yeah, this, this, this is the problem of talking about these, um, uh, about psychedelic chemicals and all to, well, just psychoactive substances that alter your state of consciousness because you can debate about them forever and ever and ever and there's going to be like the main two sides uh, are going to be the materialist uh, side of like oh it was just all in your brain being produced by chemicals and etc and this is clearly obvious because the other person um, will tell you like oh you were just standing around walking in circles so it's clear that your brain was just completely making the experience and then there's the other side this sort of like mystical uh, spiritual transcendent um, sort of explanation for it where it's like Consciousness is literally completely illogical and immaterial and abstract and it can produce these sort of completely alien out there experiences obviously catalyzed by a chemical within the the dream quote-unquote of 
physical reality it dreams up these chemicals it takes to then put itself in an altered state because at the end of the day it needs to make a, it needs to make this gr dream say that god slash universal consciousness needs to make this dream as grounded as possible so it imagines um a believable way of it, of altering its state of consciousness where it's like oh i put these chemicals in my brain and then the brain produces these uh, different hallucinations but actually what it's really doing or well what people on this side of the argument believe is that it's basically completely shifting your con imagine your consciousness um is a a giant sort of like audio mixing machine with all these little dials and different dials are tuned in different levels for everybody and as i said there's infinite dials and um, that consciousness can experience and even individual people even there's like a human there's the human set of dials some humans have their dials tweaked to another end like some people say like they might have their say um I don't know. Um, they, their intelligence, general intelligence dial might be switched up. Say, like, their autism dial might be switched up. Or say they're, like, I don't know, um, mental disorders or mental disabilities dial is switched up a bit more, more so than the normal person. And this sort of analogy can be um, um, applied to psychoactive substances where, say, you take a delirium like DPH or Detura and it'll flick, it'll completely like warp these dials away from human consciousness and, and you can basically experience a whole altered state of reality. I know this is a very sort of woo-woo out there explanation for it, but when you take enough psychedelics and research all of this and get really stuck deep down the rabbit hole, you will see consciousness in sort of a less logical less material fashion um not saying there's anything wrong with experiencing it like that or well perceiving it like that i'm just saying that i'd say for most people who are on this journey that was probably the conclusion they will come to that consciousness is sort of this like infinite uh unquant unquantifiable is that a word uh sort of ocean of everythingness but also nothingness a giant paradoxical infinite ocean um, that can experience stuff like a completely alien realm through, say, a chemical catalyst such as diphenhydramine, but the actual substance of the the chemical is actually imaginary. Fuck me. I, this, as if I'm now going on my deepest rant on a DPH trip report, that's actually insane. Uh, got very carried away here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if people go off at me in the comments like, what you're saying is absolute horseshit. Uh, but yeah, fair play. I, I, I respect everybody's opinions anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this pretty messed up report and an even more messed up explanation of consciousness by me. Well, just with some closing remarks, uh, I hope the guy who actually experienced this um, around eight years ago, uh, the user Sumin Kin, hopefully he is feeling actually better now because that sounded like a really messed up experience and I bet it probably affected his physical and mental health uh, for quite a long time. Hopefully he came through the other side and used this sort of crazy experience to catalyze it into some positive change and um, because there is potential for that there is you won't just well some people will be traumatized for life but not always that's not always the case um he says um in the top post he was like i'm lucky to be alive someone says good lucky or bad lucky and he replies good lucky i'm sad a lot of the time but i don't want to be dead and that's a good attitude and that was eight years ago sort of fresh off the experience um, yeah, really hope that he's doing better and to tell you lot to please don't do this and use this report as not just a piece of entertainment but also uh, a word of warning uh, to don't mess with chemicals like these at all. It's just a fool's game really and um, not much good can come of it. Um, it's literally the classic case of curiosity killed the cat. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next one.